I'm Chef Frank. And I'm regular Emily. This is Proto Cooks, and today we're making shepherd's pie. Shepherd's pie. Mm. Ooh. I'm really excited to have Emily back on the channel. Hi. To make shepherd's pie. Now, have you made shepherd's pie before? I have not made shepherd's pie before. Ah, have you made beef stew? I have made beef stew. And okay. in fact, I have it on my YouTube channel. We'll link it up hey. there. We'll link it up. <laughs> right up there uh, ah. to her channel so you can see Emily's <laughs> beef stew. Uh, so shepherd's pie is basically, we're making a beef version. We could have done lamb if we wanted to. Uh, it's basically beef stew with a layer of mashed potatoes on top. Ooh. And I'm gonna teach. <laughs> I don't know why I acted like I'm surprised. I've eaten shepherd's pie. I like shepherd's pie, I just haven't made shepherd's yeah. pie. Anyway, go on. <laughs> I'm gonna show Emily my version today. You serve this to someone, and what do they feel? They feel the love. Yeah, right? rainy day, Irish pub, yes. brighten your day. You with know? a pint. Yeah. A good pint Preferably. of a stout or one of your favorite Irish beers, and uh, that's it. Let's get into it. All right. For my shepherd's pie, this is what we're gonna need beef stock or beef broth, okay. celery, Ooh. carrots. Mm -hmm. Some good Irish butter. Important. It has to be Irish butter. Gotta be. Potatoes, I have two different types, but we'll talk about that later. Um, thyme, mm -hmm. bay leaf. Mm -hmm. You need butcher's twine, and we'll talk about that later too. It's not gonna Spend add flavor. flavor. <laughs> well, we'll see. Garlic, onions, some sort of stout beer. I'm using Guinness. You can use Murphy's if you have it. A rutabaga, mm -hmm. and some heavy cream. And? Beef. beef. You need lots of beef. <laughs> A big pile of beef. <laughs> I want to tell you how I choose the beef for this. And uh, usually shepherd's pie is with lamb because you're mm -hmm. a shepherd. You're shepherding the, the, the sheep, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to use beef. It's a little more accessible. Mm -hmm. um, and the way that I choose it is I'm looking for fat. Ooh, okay. Yeah. So if you look at this piece of meat, there's a lot of marbling in there, right? Beautiful this is marbling. a bottom chuck roast. Uh, usually people will roast this whole piece of meat off. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to cut it up and um, make it into a stew, basically. Right. So when you get your roast or you get your stew meat, I like to cut my own because I get to choose the meat. Yeah, I was totally thinking I just buy those stew cubes a lot of the time, but this is very smart. <laughs> I find the stew cubes are, uh, they're just using whatever bits and pieces they have left yeah, over. Yeah. They're definitely not the best. No, and they kind of get dried out. And that's that's why I go for like the bigger cuts so that then I get to choose the piece of meat that I want, right? Uh, I do this with ground beef. Anytime I um, I can physically kind of process yeah. the meat myself from a larger piece of meat, that's what I do. Makes sense. Yeah. And you'll see that it's not really all that hard. You ready to cut? Yeah. Okay. Born ready. Okay. So all we really want to do, I'm going to save my plate over here and we're just going to cut it. You have a knife over there. And we're just gonna cut it into cubes, right? There's natural separations, right? So if there's a natural separation, you can just pull it apart on natural separation, right? But we're going for about, what is that? I don't even know, that's a, uh, how many centimeters is that, my Canadian friend? <laughs> it's like, uh, four, <laughs> four maybe? Uh, you maybe about maybe. an inch and a half, two inches. <laughs> Great at math, no. so you're kind of looking at a double whammy of not knowing. Uh, <laughs> so I always like, there's natural separations, you can pull okay. it apart, right. uh, but we just yeah, want to cut into nice better. cubes. If there's little chunks of fat there, I'm going to cut those off because I don't want the stew to be greasy, but I'm not going to throw that away because when you get fat like this, this is gold. Don't throw your fat away. We'll save it. It's not going to end up in our stew, but we'll save that, okay? Mm -hmm. So just, I'm going to put it on the plate here. We can just cut it and throw it on our plate. Right? Is this okay fat wise? That's fine. Yeah, just no big like goobery chunks because when that cooks, it's not going to be delicious. Gotcha. But I like to say fat. I'm a, like a fat hoarder. <laughs> <laughs> my wife and my daughter get mad like, what is this? This is, what, what is this in the fridge? It's fat. I said, oh, that's chicken fat. Leave it there. You know, and they're like, no, I don't want to leave it there. Oh, I'll call you when I'm trying to figure out what to do. We always have like little things of fat. We're just like, what are we going to do with this bit? Save the <laughs> fat. Fry some potatoes in it. <laughs> I like big chunks, right? I'm not. Am I going too big no, here? Maybe you cut that in half. That's yeah. a little too too big. Um, I don't necessarily, like a lot of people when they do stew, they want it to fit on the fork or the, the spoon, right? right? I want to have like a nice meaty chunk, yeah, right? Yeah. I don't want it to be too small. So. Yeah, and preferably it's going to like break down a little too. Yeah, right? yeah. It's going to shrink and it's going to be nice and tender. And that's what I want. Right. Uh, I think that this dish is also better the next day. Ooh. Like if you let it sit. Um, shepherd's pie, I would, what I would do for this is I would make the beef stew the day before. Mm -hmm. And then the next day, put the, the mashed potatoes on and then roast it all off, right? Because oh. beef stew or stews like that tend to, the longer like they sit, and... the better flavor you get, right? Nice. That's beautiful. Look at the marbling on there, yeah, right? If you get that piece of meat, check out that marbling. And that's what I'm looking for. When I choose my own pieces of meat, that's what I'm going to get. Look at how beautiful that is, right? Ooh. Fat equals what? Taste, flavor. Flavor, yes. Okay. Um, let's clean up and let's cook, yeah. uh, cut the veg. All right. Good. Okay. For the mashed potatoes, mm -hmm. I have two different types. Yeah, you said that. What? what? 
Well, you know, it's kind of the best of both worlds, yeah. I think. Uh, the russets, when you cook them, are a little kind of on the mealy side. Sure. Uh, so it's just a plain russet potato. And then a Yukon Gold. You which are gold. the creamier ones, right. the more, you know, waxy. It's, it's like a mix between fluffy and like dense. Yeah. All right, so let's peel. All right. <laughs> Uh-oh, this is not my strongest suit. Um, yeah, I hold the potato like this, uh -huh. and then I peel, and I turn. Okay. I'm really fast at peeling potatoes, <laughs> so do not feel. This is, you know, I actually didn't have a peeler for like five years at one point. So I just learned to do everything with a knife. Um, and so I'm just not very good. Reminder, send Emily a peel. I have one now. All right, it took us a little while. Potatoes peel. Potatoes are peeled, right? <laughs> uh, I'm gonna get these right onto the floor. <laughs> <laughs> wow, this is quite the household. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we just, we, you know, we have we have something that cleans us up. No, not really. <laughs> yeah. You know, um, you know when you're at a bar and there's like, potato, like peanut shells all yeah. over the floor? There's houses like that with everything. Yeah. <laughs> so I have the both type of potatoes and all I'm gonna do now is kind of cut them in half mm -hmm. So they all kind of cook at the same rate, okay, uh, and we're gonna throw them in our pot oh, Just there? yeah, just oh, like that. Okay. Those will cook a little faster Because they're a little lighter Yeah, but we're making mashed potatoes and I want the starch to stay in the potato. I totally forgot what we were doing for a second <laughs> It's like for stew? We're That's a big potato That's my impression of myself. All right, and then we're gonna put those in the pot and we haven't washed these yet so there's still some peels on the outside, and uh, I'm not worried about that. I worry about washing them now. I'm, little extra nutrients, yeah. I'm gonna bring them over to the sink. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna rinse off any peels that are there, and mm -hmm. then uh, we'll put them up to a boil. Cool. Cool. I'm putting these on the fire. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna bring them to a boil. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm gonna salt them really well at this point, and I'm just gonna cook them until they are super tender. All right. Yeah. So Our what are we doing here? <laughs> so Frank, what, what's going on? These are vegetables, I know, right? Thanks, thanks for the intro. <laughs> So we are making a basic beef stew for mm -hmm. the shepherd's pie, right? right? There's a difference between a braise and a stew. Do you know what the difference is? Uh, okay, I feel like stew has more liquid maybe? Yes, <laughs> really? absolutely. That's one of the differences, yeah, right? <laughs> Stew has more liquid. Usually mm -hmm. stew, everything's submerged in the liquid. Right, yeah, yeah. You got and you're stew. cooking to make that the finished dish. You don't really have to do anything else to the dish. Maybe take some of the fat off, right? A braise is is about two thirds to three quarters submerged. So you're usually using, usually mm -hmm. using a larger cut of meat. Mm -hmm. Stew is like small submerged, right? Right. Um, yeah, and, yeah, you get like a braised like short rib. Yeah, like so it's a bigger like piece, 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 right? And usually with a braise, you're taking the sauce and straining out all the vegetables and then putting vegetables in for a garnish. Oh, wow. For a stew, we're gonna cut our vegetables so that they are part of the meal. Right. So that's the idea with, with cutting the vegetables. So um, let me show you how I want to cut them, and then we'll talk about the old elephant in the room. <laughs> the rutabaga. The in rutabaga. The, room. <laughs> the rutabaga in the room. Okay, so when I cut the vegetables, and we're going to go right back onto the white plate. Okay. I want them to be a little on the larger side right. because this is going to cook for a long time and I don't want my vegetables to kind of melt away and yeah, fall yeah. apart. Okay. So all I'm going to do with the onions is cut them in half and then maybe in sixths, right? Cool. So it's a decent sized piece of onion yeah, that yeah. we're going to get some flavor from and then when you eat this stew uh, and you get the mashed potatoes, you get chunks of onions. You're going to experience the onions. Yeah, you're going to get some of that texture from the onions. Okay, so cut. Let's cut. Good. Onions are cut. Do the carrots and the celery next. And the celery... Take, take, uh, I'm gonna, I'll take three, you take two, okay? Uh, the celery we're just gonna cut into kind of like, for lack of a better term, it's kind of like a baton, right? Hmm. We just want like nice pieces of celery. Go two centimeters ish. Two, two, two or three. <laughs> two or three centimeters. Don't pull out the metric. <laughs> I'll pull out the metric whenever I want. And as I get to the end, they go a little bit shorter, okay. just a little, not much, uh, because they're bigger chunks, right? We can push that aside for now, and then we'll grab a handful of cabbage. So carrots all come in different shapes and sizes. So whenever I have a carrot with a long kind of neck like that, I cut that off. Yeah. And then I'll just go in and cut like nice, decent sized pieces. So the, the end of the day, I want these to kind of cook evenly. Right. Uh, so the smaller pieces I cut on like on a, a longer shape. And then as we go up in the carrot, I cut it a little bit short. Yeah, so that one's small, just cut it. Yeah, three pieces is perfect, okay? And then we can put the celery right on top. Not the first time someone's described my chopping as perfect. The second time. <laughs> Who said it the first time? Me. Ah. Just once quietly along in my kitchen. Uh, with the garlic, all we're going to do is cut it into 
like some slices. Not even gonna go crazy. And it's not gonna taste garlicky, right? My father-in-law is from Ireland and he does not like garlic. So uh, just as a background flavor, okay? Right. Just a little whisper of garlic. Okay, the, here comes the rutabaga. Now, okay. uh, you can put any vegetables you want in this for the most part. Mm -hmm. I've heard parsnips. I've heard potatoes, even though we're putting potatoes on top. Sure. Um, rutabaga is one of these vegetables that I didn't like as a kid. Mm -hmm. Do you like rutabaga? Uh, I have like, I like rutabaga. I don't, I, I don't, I feel like I don't have a like close relationship with rutabaga. The time I eat rutabaga in the year is at Thanksgiving. My mom makes it. Yeah. yeah. And that's kind of what it is for us as well. I like the, the flavor of this in the stew. It gives a little more of that, uh, uh, for lack of a better term, earthiness, or maybe mm. that, I think, uh, like, the, what is it, umami-ish yeah, yeah, flavor, yeah, yeah. right? Uh, so the way you deal with this is they usually come waxed. I will cut oh. both ends off, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and then I'll just peel back all of the green, right? right. They're not easy. Oh, that was loud. <laughs> Uh, I, I will use my knife to peel back most of the green part and the wax, right? Right. And I just kind of do like a slicing motion. I'm trying to follow the curve of this. I don't know if we're going to use the whole thing because I don't want this to be overpowering. I think it could get to a point where it's a little overpowering, but we're gonna cut it up and we'll see what we, we're gonna use when we finally start putting the stew together. Well. And then I'm just gonna cut it in half. And when I cut this in half, because it's so big and unwieldy, 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 thank unwieldy. you. Uh, I'm gonna just cut it in half <laughs> first, word, really. right? It is a very unwieldy, un <laughs> I'm giving you your half. And we're just gonna do like um, a rough chop on it, right? Yeah. So just go down and each half just cut into like nice cubes. You all right? Yeah, I'll just be- If you ever get to a point where it's getting stuck, flat hand on top mm -hmm. uh, and push down with your flat hand. Flat hand, flat. Curl your fingers under because you can get caught. Yeah. So I just go like flat hand. My fingers are almost like pointing up, right? And I have some nice chunks, right? There's some small pieces here. There's some big pieces here. And that's what I'm looking for. Uh-oh. My baby. <laughs> that is Juno. She is my dog niece. <laughs> uh, and that's it. Let's, let's, uh, let's get the beef and start browning it off. All right, let's do it. We're going to prepare our beef for browning. And this is one of the key things you need to do when you do a stew mm -hmm. is you need to brown the meat. Mm -hmm. um, Browning is like flavor. It's called the Maillard reaction. There's fancy things yeah, for this. Yeah, I've seen Rose. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Help me, Rose. <laughs> uh, but we want to get it brown because browning is delicious. And mm -hmm. this is going to kind of give us that nice kind of baseline of our stew. Um, I'm going to hit it with some black pepper and some salt. Yes. And you're going to flour it up. Okay, right. once I get the salt and black pepper on, you're just going to dredge those in flour. And what the flour is going to do, it's going to brown and it's going to give us some thickening power hmm. to our stew, right? I'm just gonna use my hands because, yeah, you know, my house, my rules. Mm -hmm. If you want to just put All the right. flour onto the tray. Do you mean, yeah, should I just like? Yeah, just put, dump, dump the whole thing out. Yeah. And then we just throw our pieces of beef in there. Cool. And All get right, them. now I see what you're saying. Yeah. Got it. I know, I wasn't very clear with that instruction. No, I'm supposed no, to be no, a good no. teacher, <laughs> right? No, you're, you're doing great. It's, yeah. you know. I'm um, just gonna, I'm gonna overload you with a, as many pieces perfect. of beef as possible. I should probably use both my hands. Yeah. <laughs> The right. Maillard browning thing is actually like, was a big learning lesson for me because I realized that uh, one of the reasons that my cooking was not very good a few years ago. Is like, you weren't browning stuff? Well, I was like turning it too frequently. Yeah. So it was never getting like a really good like sear or like a really good. Yeah. Because I was too nervous and I, I, I felt like like the, I had to watch things all the time. Like I needed to be moving it or doing something. But really with cooking, sometimes you just gotta wait. Yeah. Do you believe as you progress as a cook that like you, you think to yourself, I can't believe I was stressed about that. Yeah, a lot of it is like, yeah. uh, oh, I actually need to be doing less. Yeah. You know? Yeah, let it let it be. Let it do its thing. They're seasoned well. They're floured up. Uh, let's set up the pot and start browning. It's time to start cooking. put it together, right? Yeah. Like, you know, here's the cool thing about this is that, yes, there's a lot of preparation, but once it's in the oven, you can kind of just forget just about it. Out. Yeah, okay. So, uh, vegetable oil mm -hmm. in a hot pan. And we're going to cook it in this pan, too. Going to get this oil nice and hot. Try not to overload the pan, and you're gonna, giving you the tongs. You're gonna oh. be the browner, the turner. Okay. And we're gonna start to fry it off, basically. Right. Uh, try and get it brown on all sides, maybe a little more oil. We can always take some of this oil off uh, after we kind of brown everything, too. Right, right, right. So we don't put all of it back in. Well, basically what the oil does is that 
If we were to put this directly onto the pan without oil, you would get like uh, hot spots on this. Mm -hmm. What the oil does is it evens that out so that it browns evenly. Like you were saying when we were kind of putting this in the flour, it's like, don't touch it, leave it yeah, alone. Yeah. Oh, and what I normally do is I'll just kind of like look and see what we're looking at. So there's yeah. a little bit of brown. We're gonna go another. That, I learned that from you too. You can just look. Uh, yeah, you, <laughs> you can always just to, look, yeah. Divine you whether or not guess, it's brown right? yet. You can check. Yeah. yeah, you can start turning anytime. Yeah, uh, let me see. Uh, let's find one that's darker. Yeah, I guarantee you're gonna find one that's darker. Okay. Yeah, that's okay, good. It doesn't have to be so brown that it's drying out, uh, but we just wanna get some nice Ooh, brown. Yeah, go ahead. That. Yeah, keep going. Yeah, mm, yeah. Right. good, that's okay. Yeah, that was good. Yeah, I think you're good. So we browned off all the beef. We got our last few pieces here. Yeah. Once those come out, we're gonna leave the fat in the pan. Okay. All that brown stuff on the bottom is the fond. Fond. F O N D. I'm fond and, of fond. And the fond equals flavor. Flavor. Right? So <laughs> we're gonna leave that flavor in there, and once all the beef is done, I think we can pull it out. Yeah, I'm gonna start pulling it out. Yeah, let's start pulling out. We got some nice brown. The flour's in there, it's gonna help us thicken this the, the stew or the base stew for this. That's just a little liquid coming, juices coming, right? A little fountain of oil. So let's leave that here. I'll go grab the veggies and then we'll finally, hopefully get this in the oven. We've been making this stew for nigh on 20 years. <laughs> I live in Frank's house now. Yeah. My beard has gotten grayer and longer. <laughs> yeah. Mine too. I had to shave before this. We have the same pot the beef was browned in. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna add my onions. Ooh. Watch it, watch for the splash. Now, in order to uh, get this stew that nice kind of rich flavor, we're gonna let these brown, okay? okay? Right. So what I like to do is just kind of toss them in the fat. And yeah. like we said with the beef earlier, is kind of just let them sit, yeah. right? That's, that's another lesson I've been learning. Yeah. Put some onion in, onions in. Let and it let it go, it. right? Let it have a minute. At this point, I'm gonna add my bay leaf mm -hmm. because it's not gonna burn. And then I took my thyme and I kind of made a little bundle out of it. We call this a, a bouquet garni. Uh, I'm just gonna throw that bundle in now. I'm gonna hit this with a little salt right now. Mm -hmm. I season throughout the process. I want like, you know, we're gonna put a little salt here and there and at the end yeah. we'll have a nice seasoned dish. Mm. You can see how fast that kind of starts to brown. Oh, they smell good, they're mm -hmm. getting fragrant. I'm gonna add my garlic. Okay, so we're starting to get some nice brown in there. Carrots and celery go in. Veggies are beautifully caramelized. You see how the onions are kind of breaking down? Yeah. Some of them are staying whole and that's, that's what I want, yeah. right? Carrots, good. carrots and celery are kind of starting to soften. Yeah. What I want to do now is deglaze. Mm -hmm. You know what deglazing is? Yeah, yeah. It's when it, the stuff stuck to the bottom. You put some liquid in. It comes with it. Guinness me. Ooh. Okay. Not that one. Use that one. Oh, okay. That one's warm. That one's cold. In case we want to drink. I think they're both cold. Oh, they're both cold. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm happy to. My PA told me wrong. <laughs> Just dump Ooh, the whole thing. Okay. Turn it over. Yeah. I think one can is going to be perfect. And we're using Guinness. You can use any stout that you want. The stout's gonna give us color, a little bit of sweetness, a little of those like caramel notes that we want. And it's gonna take up all that nice brown bits, all that fond on the bottom. Mm -hmm. And all we're gonna do is cook this until like, if you smell it now, you smell booze, right? You like smell booze. alcohol, right? Mm -hmm. We're just gonna cook it until we don't smell alcohol anymore. So make sure you get in there with a spoon or your stirring utensil and scrape along the bottom. If you look, there's nothing left on the bottom. All yeah. that brown stuff came up. As that's simmering away, we're gonna add our beef in. Mm -hmm. Okay, and just tuck it in there, right? If there's any juices left on the pan, uh, like if there's any like juices that come out, that's cool, those juices go in. Let's put the beef stock in, yeah. You ready? Yeah, all of it. In. Just dump it all in. Okay. Yes, all of it. There you go. Perfect. That's what I want. We're fully submerged. It. One more thing we're going to do again is season again. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We're going to cook this in the oven. Mm -hmm. And the oven is a great gentle heat for this. The key thing you have to do is bring it to a boil and then lower it to a simmer. Okay. And then it goes in the oven. Mm -hmm. It's come to a boil. Mm -hmm. We've loaded to a simmer. Let's put our rutabaga in. All right. Let's get the um, some of the larger chunks. We can be selective. Big chunks. Okay. Just drop them Just in. Just drop them in? You drop them in, I'll tuck them under. I'll tuck them in. You drop <laughs> them in, I'll tuck them in. Well, give me one more right there. Yeah, that was that, that place was lacking. <laughs> all right. So we're all tucked in, all right? And then I have a piece of parchment paper. And I'm gonna take the parchment and I'm gonna lay it directly on the top. Wow, this is not a technique I've seen before. Yeah, uh, you know, this is called um, a cartouche, right? Mm. And a cartouche, 
there's different ways of folding it, this and that. There, there's a lot of different ways, but the cartouche is gonna limit some of our evaporation. Nice. I have the oven at 350. Okay. I'm gonna go throw it in the oven, and then we just let it do its thing. Yeah. It's probably gonna be about an hour and a half, two hours. Let's go in the Very oven. Very exciting. Okay, you gotta open the oven for me. Let's go. Okay. This one? Yep. Ready? So the potatoes, I, what I like to do with potatoes is to check if they're done. You stick a knife in and they really don't grip to the potato at all. Yeah. And that's yeah. it, that's done. I'm gonna string these out. We're gonna rice the potatoes because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. we want them nice and smooth. If you want chunky potatoes, you can use one of those masher things. Right, 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 right. Before we start, we're going this. We're going in with the butter and cream. I'm gonna put it on the stove behind me okay. and just melt it. Okay. I don't really like putting cold cream and butter into this because it makes the mashed potatoes cold. So <laughs> I'm gonna heat this up just till everything's melted. And right. then we'll add that later. Cool. And cool. you're just holding it in the pot for the camera. Yeah, I just want to see it in the. Yeah, I, I'm doing this awkward camera like, thing. What is this technique? I just now want to see it. We're not yeah. doing a double boiler. <laughs> We're just getting this here so we can see it on camera. Cool, okay. Cool, cool. Um, so we've never used a ricer. <laughs> okay. So per se, I don't know one. <laughs> this is the way it's gonna go. Is we're gonna you're gonna be right there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm gonna spoon them in. Uh huh. And you just squish it. Crush. Yeah, it's just like the lemon squeezer, but like yeah. for yeah something. Oh God. Okay. No. Yeah. <laughs> this is a weird angle in fairness. Yeah. So do you, oh, let's get, all right. So open her up. Okay. I'll put less in there. It's easier to crush the less you have in. Okay. Let me just. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> you can do Miriam. it. Okay. <laughs> let's switch. Switch. No, I'll stay on this side. You take the potatoes. <laughs> okay. <that makes> sense. <laughs> you load her up and I'll, and I'll squish. Okay. All right. You let me know when you're. Go like one this. more. One more scoop. Ricing. Incredible. So this gives us nice, smooth, and cream mashed. Go, go, go. All go. right, so that's it there. Now you scrape and get all the excess potatoes off. Pretty scrape. Yeah. Yeah, give me this side, give me that side. Make okay. Mess. Excellent. I'm gonna season them up now. We had some seasoning in the water, mm -hmm. uh, but I'm gonna add a fair amount of salt. And anytime I salt things, people are like, oh my gosh, you're putting too much salt. No. Oh. No, there isn't. Okay, so <laughs> I guarantee there isn't. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why they're all like Valley Girls. From, like, because that's how they sound to me. Because <laughs> I'm a child of the 80s, they sound like Valley Girls in the 80s. And then we're gonna add uh, all of our cream and, not all of it, we'll add most of it mm -hmm. and then give it a stir, right? Be careful, it's gonna slosh a little. Um, get down, to, make sure you get down to the bottom too, yeah. So see how they're nice and creamy and uh, beautiful, and that's what we they want. They really are. A nice creamy, there's a little fluffy potato, a little starchy potato, so we got a little bit of everything. Best yeah. of both worlds. Let, let me get in there for a sec. Yeah, yeah, make sure I'm I... gonna swipe my edges. I'm gonna go into the corners to make sure we got all of the loose potatoes. You did great. Thanks. I don't have to do much there. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, and stir. let's taste. Get in there. Come on. Cheers. Cheers. I think they need a little salt. Really? Yeah. No, oh, I thought they were delicious. <laughs> <laughs> so let's just do a little more salt. Hmm. So let's set these aside until our stew is ready. All right, look at that. Uh, how long was it? I forget. 8,000 years. It was about 8,000 years in the oven. Probably about. that in like two hours. Yeah, about two hours, right? <laughs> I'm going to take the parchment off. The parchment is garbage. Forget um, the parchment. And I want to show you what I'm looking for, okay? okay? Uh, you can see that our beef is like soft. Tender. Not necessarily falling apart. Like a lot of people think that when you make a stew, the meat needs to be falling apart. No, I just want it tender with a little bit of bite to it. Mm -hmm. Our vegetables are super soft and beautiful, but Very not soft. falling apart. Mm -hmm. um, still, you can see the whole, you know, they're yeah. just still like clearly a carrot, clearly a rutabaga. Yeah, yeah, and that's what I like about this, right? You want to have some vegetables in there too. Yeah, we have yeah. our mashed potatoes. All right. We have our stew. And we're going to just put the... We're going to put the potatoes on the stew mm -hmm. and we're going to put it in the oven. All right. You ready for that? No, but let's do it anyway. Let's do it. I have my casserole, so let's ladle that in. You want to ladle that in? Sure, sure, sure. Get it in there. Wait, okay, let me show you how to hold a ladle. Is this better? Yes. Okay. That's the way you do I it. I was actually trying to, you know what I did is I was trying to remember what you do. Yeah. Uh, and I panicked and went for the opposite. <laughs> uh, make sure we get some vegetables in there too and some of the soup or the liquid, right? I don't mind there's a little fat in there. The potatoes will uh, absorb some of that fat. Uh, ideally, like I said, I like to let this sit overnight. Go, let's go about halfway up. Let's get some more meat in there. Cool, cool, cool. Right? Just trying to get an even distribution here. Keep going. Oh. That's okay. We're gonna splash. We're gonna make a mess. Okay. There, oh, what did we just find? Oh, we found I see the prize. Woohoo! That's that's our time. Ah, that's gonna go right in the trash. Don't eat it. 
I'm gonna eat it. The string doesn't give us flavor. What? Maybe well, a little. Simple. Maybe a little. <laughs> a little string flavor. Okay, I think that scoop is gonna be the last. Oh, okay. Right, do so let's want, do you want a little let's more? just squish it down a little so we have a nice even layer. Maybe a little more juice. Yeah, you want another rutabaga in there? Maybe over let's here? get one more rutabaga. Oh, let's get two more rutabagas. Yeah. Get in there, rutabagas. Okay, so we're nice and juicy, and then we're gonna top it off with the mashed, okay? okay. And uh, I'm just gonna use my fingers because it's my kitchen. And yeah. I'm gonna make a nice raft of mashed potatoes. And now all we really have to do to this is put it in the oven, reheat it, make sure that we have a little bit of browning on top. Just letting it all get married, you know? Yeah, let it come together. A lot of people will do a design on this. I like it rustic, right? Sure. So let's go in the oven. Let's go. And when it's ready, we finally get the taste. Eat. Are you ready to taste? It's been a long day of making <laughs> shepherd's pie. I was born ready to Okay, taste. let's go. I'm gonna just yeah. dig in. We'll get you a nice piece of beef. I can feel there's a piece of beef. I'm gonna get you, I'm gonna try and find you. There's a rutabaga. Yeah. Not exactly beautiful food. Uh, I think it's beautiful. But I think it's gonna be delicious. Let's get me a piece of beef. Yes. And definitely get me a rutabaga because we like rutabagas. We like a rutabaga around here. All right. I'm so excited. I'm I am going to opt for a spoon. Oh, you're, you're not. Okay, you're ready? I'm going for it. It's going to be hot. Be careful. Mm. Mm. That mm. is very good. It's like, it's so cozy. It's like yeah. a. It's a warm sweater. Yeah. Some nice socks. <laughs> you get like that buttery and like beefy and like. Let's get some of that rutabaga. Just mm. delicious. Mm. It takes a little time. Mm -hmm. takes a little technique. But in the end, it's. That's something that's really good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I guess I'm going to have to buy a ricer. That, you have to buy a ricer. And maybe some gym equipment. Potatoes are still creamy. They help thicken the sauce. Everything about this is a wonderful dish. We're going home, Rob. Okay, I'm going to do my outro. You finish eating. No. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this video. If it did, give us a thumbs up, like, and subscribe. <laughs> we have merch in the description down below. We I have a merch. P.O. box down there as well. Mm. Uh, I want to thank our Patreon patrons for your support. Thank you so much. And that's it. That is my shepherd's pie with... Avarado. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Chef Frank. This is Proto Cooks. Have a good one. Bye.